Hey everybody, Randall Cornet here. Hope you guys are having a great day. I wanted to bring, and you guys might have already heard about this, maybe not, but it's pretty crazy. 69% of the total volume overall across AMC uh, was done in the dark pool today. 69%. Typically we see like 58 to like 62, which is astronomically high. But 69%, it's no, and I know there's a lot of contending views on this, but there's no surprise to me or guess like i i just have this this my theory is that there's no this is why we're seeing the negative price action that we're seeing on amc right i think the dark pool is the biggest detractor of where we're going and you know basically market makers abusing payment for order flow and really playing both sides of this coin to make money and really to you know shore up liquidity and i think the theme here has been and this kind of ties into what, what i'm getting into for the past like week or two, what, what apes are finding out that this is becoming a liquidity game. Like where can the funds that are the hedge funds that are against us find liquidity? So it's opened up a whole lot of new doors in terms of like ETFs, synthetic ETFs. There's been some great information uh, on that. And I got to really and to be honest with you, you guys have know that uh, me and Charlie haven't always had the best pass. But I have to give credit to Charlie and the Vince because he kind of did open the door in terms of these synthetic ETFs and gave me an idea of what I was looking for. So there's basically there's these synthetic ETFs or leverage securities, right? Um, and what they can do is it, they basically track like indexes of funds like the S&P 500, um, you know, the FTC SE 100. There's a lot of different things, but they're not really backed off the underlining security like a physical ETF would. They use things um, like other financial instruments, derivatives, swaps, things like that to basically generate liquidity out of fucking thin air, if you pretty much ask me, right? They figure out between two parties, they have a counterparty and they engage in a swap and they can trade and it's a way for them to generate liquidity, um, which seems to be the name of the game. So if we're looking at the difference between a physical ETF and a synthetic ETF, so uh, physical ETF trades on securities of the index, synthetic ETFs trades on swaps and collateral. Um, Physical ETFs are transparent in nature. Synthetic ETFs, not so much. Historically low, but improvement has been seen. The counterparty risk for physical ETFs is uh, limited, and the counterparty risk is higher than physical ETFs on synthetic ETFs. And the costs associated with these are transaction costs and management fees on physical ETFs and swap costs and management fees on synthetic ETFs. So... Bring me to my next point. We started looking at some of these leverage securities that kind of inherit this, um, how do I say, synthetic um, approach or basically different forms of tracking indexes outside of the underlying security. So again, swaps, collateral, things like that. So if we look, ProFunds, which is a BlackRock company, this is where I started the research. And so we pulled up some of their um, SEC reports. And it was really interesting what I found. So remember all the people that were against hedge funds, banks, um, banks that are lending to hedge funds, everything is really a race to get liquidity so they can continue doing business as usual. So obviously that web, uh, you know, weaves out over a, a large amount of different things and instruments. So we took a look at, you know, we'll look at this ProShares Russell Ultra Russell 2000, right, which is a leverage security. So we look at the actual total assets. It looks like 720 million. And so what I started to do is look at the funds that were borrowing securities from this fund, right? So if you look securities lending for each borrower in any securities lending transaction, provide the following information, right? So these are all the people that are borrowing securities from this ETF. And I just thought it was really interesting to look at the names that are in this. So you have State Street um, and look at the amounts, right? The aggregate value. So that's going to be the bottom column. You got Citadel Securities, Wells Fargo Securities, JP Morgan, Credit Suisse, Barclays Capital. And I mean, look at the amounts again. These are huge numbers. HSBC, UBS Securities, National Finance Services financial services, Goldman Sachs, Citigroup Global Markets, Credit Suisse, again, their Dublin branch. Citadel Securities, again, UBS AG London branch, Morgan Stanley. So if all these guys are tied together at the hip and they're all tossing around liquidity or means to gain liquidity, 
this is just one ETF that kind of fits under this leverage security, um, you know, list. And so there's more. And I'm going to go over all those with you guys as well. I kind of just started diving into this. Um, but I do think it's important to realize that a lot of these big banks are basically borrowing shares against this um, ETF, which is highly interesting to me. And I plan on connecting all those dots for you guys. Uh, it's going to take me a little bit to do some research, obviously. But um, as I look through the other ETFs, you can best believe that I'm going to be coming at you with the most, well, basically anything that I find that I can prove, I will be uh, providing that with you all. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the information. This is just kind of the tip of the iceberg, and I look forward to bringing you guys more. If you enjoy the content, please do me a favor, like to subscribe, you know, all that good stuff, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Love you a long time. Peace.